Hello, I'm here with you today. I'm gonna to be working on a mixed media collage that I'm gonna do on um, vintage book board. And so I gathered up some materials here and some different book boards I was gonna show you. This is a book board that, actually this book, this was a, this was the set right here. <laughs> and it was a college algebra book. And so basically I opened it up. Um, I'm gonna save this one to put the actual collage on. And then this one, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I mean, I could do a double-sided bookboard collage, but you might say, what was here? Well, um, I peeled off the original linen that was on there. So it said college algebra. So as you can see here, there it is, college algebra. And so I just basically cut um, the sections and just ripped it off. And this gives really a uh, nice texture. I don't know if you can see here on the back, but it is made of a fabric. It's like a linen, little woven fabric. This is some of the, obviously the uh, cardboard that was on there. And I don't worry about that. Some people I do know try to take that off. They might, you can soak this a little bit and then some of that comes off. I don't, I just leave it on there. And the reason I really like this one, um, it has these a cool pattern right there. I also like this dot or the dots that are in there. So anyway, so that's the first one. Um, that I'm going to show you. And the second one is this book board is a bit bigger. This one had a cover and I took it off. And when I took it off, I realized it was just paper. Now it's really nice paper and it's vintage paper, but there's no, it's not, it's not fabric or rain. Now I may or may not use this, but I could also, um, put this back on and use this again, but I did the same technique. So I just took my knife and you score it down and then you just rip it off. And this one didn't rip off too well, but I do like the paper. I was hoping it was gonna be uh, more fabric, like a linen or something, but um, it's not. So um, I think I'm gonna do my collage on this one because if it sells, it's a nice presentation background. I think I might save the other ones for like if I'm doing a practice piece or something. So I've shown you my book covers that I ripped off and here's the book paper and here's some more <clears throat> and this one I kind of like because it looks like it got some of the um, glue that was on, on underneath so that's also kind of a nice texture this is the spine of the book and as you can see it's really nice as well and this one you can actually you know put over on this side or you can put on that side I could even try to peel this apart more because I think this would probably peel off yeah, a little bit, that could peel off. And then I have some, what's called linen tape. And this is typically used in book binding or book repair, but it is, it's kind of the same stuff as this, as the cover. So it's the same kind of linen fabric, but this is pre-glued on the backside. So all you have to do is get this wet and it will stick on. I really like this because it's, it's, it's giving me a really nice straight line and I love black. And if I wanted to, I could punch holes in this one too. So I'm gonna be using those. I also have some old ledger paper that I've wiped some of my brushes off on. Uh, I think actually, I think that might be jelly plate, but I have uh, vintage ledger paper. I also have a piece here that I uh, took from some kind of paper, I don't remember, but I jelly plate, I jelly plated it. Is that a word? I think I've said that like three times now um, in previous videos. Anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna use this or not, but I did like the black and the lines. And then the other thing I have, uh, finally, these are, these are from books. These are from books. And so I tried to pick out similar colors because obviously we're kind of going with this brown theme here, brown and black, and then possibly blue. So I tried to stay in the same similar color palette. And then I found this dude who, I believe this was painted by Rembrandt, and that might even be a self-image. I'm not really sure. Don't quote me on that, but it was it's some kind of around that time period. I cut this out, and then I just squared the sides because I'm gonna, my uh, collage is going to be mostly, um, you know, rectangles and squares and vertical and horizontal lines. So I wanted to make sure that I got those lines in there. Th these were his hands, and I think that was like right about there. And I cut those out too, kind of in a, you know, well, mostly square shape. And again, I've got that aside there. Now, if you have watched my other videos, 
you know that one of the things that I like to do before I collage is I like to get my papers together. I like to limit my selection in that I don't limit myself just to what is here. I certainly pull from other sources, but this way it allows me to kind of just see what I have in front of me and just kind of start making the piece. And, and if you also have watched some of my other videos, you know that I like to do corners first. So because I'm not exactly sure how I want this to go, I'm going to just rip some ledger paper. Ledger paper to me is like a neutral paper. It's just a very, you know, plain color. The ledger paper to me is only there. Well, first of all, texture vintage nice, but the reason I love this ledger paper so much is it gives you automatic lines. So here's some lines going down and here's some lines going across. And since this collage is going to be one where the composition is both vertical and horizontal, then I'm going to do it that way. This glue, <laughs> I got this glue at Dollar General and it's not, it's the first time I've used this glue. It was cheap. It was like 10 cents. It had like 10 for a dollar or something. And now I kind of know why. I don't think it's working. Let me see if I can, let me try a different one. Let me try this one over here. The tragedies of the collage artist when your glue stick isn't working. <laughs> Okay, I could also use matte medium on this, which I may switch to if this becomes too too much for me. I can also use paint, and you've seen me use paint before as an adhesive. I'm not gonna do it in this one because I'm gonna try to do this either with no paint or very little paint because I want the colors and the textures of the materials to come through more than I do the paint. You know, less less of a grungy look, more of a refined, sophisticated look, which I don't know if that's possible with me, but all right. Now, I like this part because it has like a built-in circle here. I don't really know what that's from, but I'm going to put that right here. We're going to get some lines going this way, too. Because this is a new, because I consider this neutral, I don't really even pay attention to what's on it generally. Again, I'm just like looking for these lines right here. Now, as you can see, this is off my page here. So I try to get rid of that as soon as possible because it'll mess up my eye because my eye likes to see the rectangle. And if I don't see the rectangle, then it messes me up. So I'm gonna take some of that off. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so essentially, I have my corners here. I'm gonna do a little bit differently with these corners. I think I'm gonna go in with this college algebra paper that I just love so much. And I'm gonna put a piece here and a piece here. However, since this is just a small book cover, I don't need a whole lot of it. I'm just gonna take off the part that I like, <laughs> which is I really like this collage part. Did I say collage? College. <laughs> That's where my mind is going. Maybe that's why I like it so much because in my mind I was thinking, oh, that says collage. So I'm gonna put this one right here, keeping in mind that I want that line to be, uh, you know, on the same level, same axis. You know, I guess this is college algebra, I'm talking math now, <laughs> axis. The axis of domain or something. I think I'm remembering my trig days or geometry, one of the two. Don't have me go back there. I hated math. I was a, it's not that I couldn't do the math. I could do the math. It's just that I did not enjoy it. I didn't like it. It didn't come easily to me like all the other top, uh, subjects did. Like English came very easily to me. Science, you know, history, all those things. But math did not come easily. I actually had to kind of work at it a little bit. And because of that, I just didn't like it. It was like, this is too much work. <laughs> so, I, you know, like I said, I could do it. And I took it in high school, I think I went all the way to pre-calculus in high school. And then when I got to college, I took the absolute bare minimum that I had to take. And I, the bare minimum was I had to get through statistics. So I went from, I think it was college algebra then I had to take geometric analysis or something. And then I had to take statistics. And the interesting thing about that was here I am, I hate math. I can do it, but I dread it and I hate it. I get into the statistics class and I've never had statistics before, anything even close to it. 
and I absolutely loved it. It's not just that I was good at it and I picked it up very easily. I loved it. And to this day, I really don't know why I like, I like statistics and why that class and instruction came so easily to me when the others didn't. I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can think of is we did do a lot of charts, uh, you know, for statistics and you had to read the graphs and you had to read the charts. And I am a visual person, I'm very visual. And so maybe, maybe that was it. I don't know. Anyway, it'll be the mystery that's never solved, unless one of you is like a math genius out there and can tell me. So here, you can see this is where I cut this guy out. I do like this, uh, you know, kind of an edge. It looks kind of like a shadow. I like this guy too. So because I do want to use him in some capacity, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put him here because I, I do want to try to use him. Uh, I also cut this out. This is a, a building and I really like this because of the lines. I even like that blue, but I think I'm gonna cut off the blue, at least for now. And I think I'm just gonna go with, with this, try to get a little bit straighter. I never use rulers or measures or any of that kind of stuff. I just kind of eyeball it. And then if it needs to be straightened out, I fix it straight. I fix it later within the composition. I'll fix it with circles and things, which I do have a video up right now on YouTube that discusses how I do that. So if you want to take a look at that, you can. All right, I'm just going to cut here. So now I'm just thinking, I like that tree. I really like this line. I like this line. And I don't know if you can see the telephone wires that are going across. I kind of like that detail as well. So I'm just trying now to decide where I want to put this. I'm not really sure where I want to put it, but I do think I want to use it. So it's possible that I could put uh, this on him because that kind of fits right in there, doesn't it? That would be kind of interesting to just put that on him. I think I'm going to do that. I didn't realize until just now that it fits pretty well right there. So let's see, I'm gonna line it up here and let's see, I'm gonna flip him around. You can see where I need to cut. Actually, I think that actually might be, this might be more straight than this dude. Okay, I'm gonna pull it down just a bit. Okay, so now we have that on him and I like that. I like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it adds uh, dimension, texture, interest, but also it squares away my comp composition. And you you know, you can see here, I use this for example, where these lines are, it lines right up with his nose. You see that line there? So we have, we automatically have this line going right through the nose. Then we have this line here that is also gonna match up with his eyesight. And so we have two, line so it's almost as if this is a symmetrical or uh, something kind of reflecting back only in the sense of lines and shape because one of the other things that for example like this would might be a nose and we might consider these as eyes but I mean it's kind of stretching it but you can see that things are things line up here so here's another here's another line right here that lines up to there. So this is actually very visually appealing because the, the eye loves symmetry, balance. Um, it loves looking at things that go together well and this goes together well. So I think I'm gonna leave him there, that's nice. I might, I'm might trying to decide if I'm gonna put him center, middle, down. I could also put him here. I could also do him upside down. I actually think he probably looks better right here. So for now, I'm just going to leave him right there and I'm going to see what else I have. So I have more sky and lines and power lines. I like this quite a bit. So I think what I'm going to do is cut out a section here because I like the fact that it sort of looks like, well it is, it is, it is a cut out of his face. And I like that fact. So I'm wondering if I could do something like that. I don't really want to cover up my algebra too much. Let's see if I can scoot him over. All right. And then this is nice because you see how this line is matching this one. And if I wanted to take it over even a little bit more, we could have this line, this line, this line all line up together. 
and then you have like your own um, you know like your own line going right down through here okay so that's a possibility I would need to get I would want to get rid of this and I would want to clean this up a little bit but I kind of like that too okay I'm going to uh, my glue stick is gone <laughs> so I'm going to pause here for just a minute get a new glue stick and I'll be right back <laughs> 